In March of 2012, I just had this feeling that I needed to go see my parents. They live in St. George. And my dad had had heart issues, he'd had heart attacks, my mom's health was not good, and I really felt like they might pass away, one of them. So I made a trip up to St. George, spent a wonderful time with them, took them out to the canyon, had a picnic, the weather was beautiful, everything was perfect, and I just knew that it may be the last time I saw my mother. So I left and I came home and five days later, I found a lump on my breast. I called the doctor, went and got tests. It took about a week to get the results that I did have breast cancer. A few years ago, uh, we found out that uh, my wife Lynette had stage three breast cancer. And uh, as many of you may have experienced something like this, it was quite a shock to us. The doctor gave me a name of a doctor to go to, both to do the surgery and to do the cosmetic surgery. And so I went to the doctor and he just jumped in, wanted to do the surgery that week. And I asked him if the cancer was in the lymph nodes. And he goes, oh, it, it doesn't say here. Wait a minute. And he goes, oh, yes, it's in your lymph nodes. And so I was major concerned because he was jumping in and didn't even know all the facts. And the reconstructive surgery lady that I went to, her, she showed me pictures. And I had nightmares. I was so concerned. And, and when it happened, we decided that we would, uh, of course, find out all that we could about uh, this type of cancer and what the treatment options were. And then we relied on uh, doc friends that we know and, and, ref and people that they referred us to and did quite a bit of studying and praying about it. And so I actually went to some other doctors, got some opinions from people, and went to several doctors, found a surgeon that spent uh, quite a bit of time with me, really patient, talked about, talked about um, different options, and he wasn't quick to jump in and just do a mastectomy. He says he does lumpectomies generally, but he will do whatever I want, and I needed to make the decision. He also had me do several tests. Those several tests included getting a BRCA test, and a BRCA test is one that says if you have the cancer gene. Well, my mother has the, had breast cancer. My aunt had breast cancer. She died of breast cancer, and her son had breast cancer and has died of that. And there was some other cancer in my bloodline. And so I had the test done, and prior to getting the results, I had made the decision to have a bilateral mastectomy. And then an hour later, I got the results that I was BRCA positive, I did have the gene, and I knew the decision I made was right. So anyway, Lynette went through the various uh, procedures, the surgeries, um, the chemo treatments, and the radiation treatments. And I've got to say that she really showed a lot of courage during this time. And I was just so uh, impressed with how she submitted herself to these difficult treatments. My results on all my testing showed that I was a stage three, so my, I had full treatment on everything. And it was about two weeks in when my hair started to fall out. In fact, July 4th, I was at my son's house, and I'm holding my little grandson, and he's pulling hair. 
and it's just coming out hands full, and I knew it was time. So the next morning I got up, and my husband was ready and, and shaved my hair, and just as he was shaving the last part off, I was about to cry. And he stepped back and he said, sweetheart, <laughs> sweetheart, you're beautiful. And then the tears flowed. It was really a faith promoting experience for us. And we saw the hand of the Lord in helping us through this time, giving us the strength to do what was needed. And I, of course, didn't have to go through what she did, but it was my privilege to be there with her and to help her along the way. I had so much support through this whole thing. The very first day of chemo, I got a headache that was so bad, and it was just on one side. I was sure I had a stroke. And I, so I called my doctor, and he's like, thank you for calling me. Uh, he was always grateful if I'd ever call him when it was off hours. And wonderful doctor. I had a friend that offered to take me to her cabin in Utah, and I had scheduled treatment. And when I said something to the doctor, he says, no, we'll postpone your treatment. You need to go. So a wonderful doctor. I had friends bringing in meals, giving me rides, all kinds of things, uh, helping. We were remodeling the kitchen at the same time, and they helped unpack my kitchen and pack it up, and they were just there for everything. I had three quilts made for me. One had everybody's message to me on, and so the support was amazing. We also had a lot of other people that helped, friends and family, uh, church members that helped out in so many ways, lots of prayers that helped. And so we're so grateful uh, for the help we received, and, and I'm so thankful for everyone that helped. When I was nearing the end of my chemo treatments, my balance was so bad, I could not walk down the hall without using the wall. My neuropathy was so bad, I would just rub my arms and hands all day because they were so painful. I had sores in my mouth. All kinds of things were going on. I couldn't speak full sentences because of the chemo brain. He said, well, you maybe have had enough, and we'll talk next time you come in. And we made, I talked with my husband, and the next time I went in, we had told him we decided to stop the treatment at that point. And then we moved forward into having radiation. So radiation, on top of just having chemo, was almost harder for me. The day in, treatments going, and I became so weak, I was not able to work. My daughter ran the office while I was gone. I remember one day going in, and it had been a couple weeks where I had been in maybe once or twice, got showered, went in, sat down, and got up and left because I could not, I did not have the energy to, to go forward. And there were many nights that were dark and lonely, and I couldn't sleep. And so I was up, and the depression was hard. But then I would think about things that would keep me going, my family, my children, my grandchildren, and just remembering them gave me strength to keep going. They were a real delight in my life to see them and have them as part of my life. And they kept me going. My treatments, about a year after I started, my children put a paint party on for all the people. So many people had 
supported me in so many ways. And they all came and supported me. And it, it was just wonderful, all the love I had received. And at the end of that, my daughter, my youngest daughter, came up to me and gave me a hug that made everything worthwhile. She was so happy that I was still here. The good news is that uh, now she is doing well and uh, she continues to do her follow-up visits and continues to take some medications, but overall she's doing very well and it's been such a blessing in her life. So here I am, five years later, and I'm doing well. I still have some neuropathy. Tremors were brought forward because of the chemo, at least the doctor's thinking that's the case. My hair came in fine and thin where it was long and coarse and full, and there's challenges. But I'm grateful that I'm here. I go in for checkups once a year with the doctor, and I am doing fine. And it's really important that you get checked if there's any chance you are BRCA positive, you could be BRCA positive, then you need to get checked. My sisters got checked. One of them is not BRCA positive, two of them are. One of them, because she found out she was, went back in and got an MRI and found that she had cancer and was able to start treatment right away. And hers was level one, where mine was three. So she was grateful that she had found that in the early stages. Cancer is a very humbling uh, disease and it challenges us and it, and it makes us uh, um, see what is really most important to us in our lives. And I'm so thankful that Lynette and I, um, not that we had this experience necessarily, but that having it, we were able to get through it and it made us stronger. And so I'm, I just want to express my love for my wife and, and grateful again to all those that helped us through this time. So I'm sure that you know someone who has breast cancer, a loved one, a friend, someone in your life. If they don't currently, they will. And there's so much you can do, so many things that mean a lot. Just a flower left on the door, a text, just supporting them, telling them they're beautiful even when they don't have hair, and just being there for them. Just that smile and how are you doing today? And I'm here for you. And don't be afraid and just love them.